Hey guys, it's Sound Guy Barry. Glad you can join me once again. Today, I want to talk about the most common failure that you're going to experience in equipment as a band or a sound guy. And that is your microphone cables. The equipment takes a beating during live shows. And one of the things that takes one of the hardest beatings are microphone cables. They get stepped on, pulled on, yanked on, twisted, and uh, the wires inside of the cable can break. So it's always a good idea to carry a couple, few extra mic cables with you, just in case you have problems with a cable. And if you do have problems with a cable, I set it aside and then I check it out to make sure that um, I've got continuity between all the pins on one end and all the pins on the other. And you can easily do that with a standard volt -ohm meter, like one of those. And you just take the test probes and go to pin one on one end of the cable and pin one on the other end of the cable and we should see approximately zero ohms. We should see a nice conductive path from one pin to another. And same thing with pins two and pins three and there shouldn't be any connection between those pins. So between pin one and two or one and three or two and three it should be an open circuit, high resistance. And if that's the case, cable's probably good. An easier way to check out your cable if you have access to both ends, is with a cable tester box, which does really the same thing, except that it can check all three wires at the same time and uh, show up on these bank of LEDs here if any of the wires are open or defective. And so that's not so bad. If you can get to both ends of the cable, it's pretty easy to check out. But sometimes it's not so easy because a cable is running through a building for example, maybe you have a stage snake box on the stage and it all goes up through the ceiling over back to the mixing board inside your venue and it's 100 feet away. And uh, then that way you can't get to both ends of the cable to check out for continuity so easily unless you plug in another cable on stage and run it all the way back to the board or something. That's a hassle. And so I've got a little device here that you could make really easily to check this stuff out. And... Uh, before I get into it, I want to talk a little bit about the theory. Microphone cables look like that. they got a Canon connector on them with three pins. Pins one, two, three. Pin one is ground, two and three are signal. And the two signal connectors work equally and opposite from each other. So when the voltage goes up on pin two, it goes down on pin three. And uh, the reason for doing this, this is called a balanced connection. And the reason for using balanced connections is because the preamplifier inside of your mixing board is going to be able to better reject outside noise, buzz, and hum coming into the cable because it's able to look at the difference in signal between those wires as opposed to just whatever signal is on those wires. And so that's why we do that. So with balanced cables, we can run microphone lines 100 feet or more and still get usable quality audio out of it without hum and buzz and noise from the external environment getting in. And then, another thing that we can do is apply phantom power to the cable, and that's used for powering capacitor microphones. Now, there's two types of microphones that are in common use. The most common that you'll find on stage is a dynamic microphone, and that's a microphone that operates much like a loudspeaker does, where there's a diaphragm in the microphone that's in front of a permanent magnet, and there's a small coil of wire attached to the diaphragm. So when sound hits the microphone, it causes the diaphragm to vibrate slightly. That vibration in front of the magnet causes current to be induced into the coil. That goes down the wire, and so the microphone actually generates a little tiny bit of signal for the sounds that are coming into it, and that signal is then amplified and goes to the PA system. The other kind of microphone is a capacitor microphone, which has a more sensitive element inside of it, but the element is not able to generate its own electricity. It requires some circuitry inside of the microphone to do that job. And in order to power the circuitry inside the microphone, the microphone either needs to have a battery inside of it, or more commonly, power is driven up the mic cable into the microphone to power the preamplifier inside of the mic so it can operate. And that power is called phantom power. And you'll often see a switch labeled phantom power on your mixing board or your mic preamps, which is intended for this purpose. And what that will do is it will apply typically 50 volts, 48 volts DC, to pins 2 and 3 reference to ground, pin 1. 
So if you were to take your voltmeter and put it in volts mode with phantom power turned on, you put once one of your test leads against pin one, which is ground, and then on pin two and three, you should read 48 volts DC. Uh, on some portable equipment, it might be 12 volts. Most microphones want 48, some will work lower, but basically 48 volts DC. And we can use that to our advantage for testing the cable. So you could go to your mixing board, turn on phantom power, then go up to the stage, use your meter, and see that you get 48 volts on pins 2 and on pins 3 relative to pin 1. And if you do, that means that all three wires are making it up to stage without a break in them. An easier way to do this is you can get yourself a XLR male connector, male pins kind of like on the bottom of a standard microphone, and on the inside of that connector put in two LEDs, and each LED is connected to ground on one side, and then the long pin of the LED, which is the plus side, goes to a 3.3K resistor, which is the correct resistor to limit the amount of current that goes through the LED so we don't burn up LEDs. And so it goes, LED goes the short pin to pin one on ground, then the long pin of each LED goes to is connected to a resistor of about 3.3K. The other side of that resistor then gets connected to pin two on one LED, and the other LED goes to pin three. And so therefore, if we apply 48 volts DC phantom power to this connector, both LEDs should light up if it's getting DC power to pins two and pins three. And it will look something like that. Hopefully you can see that okay. So this is a really handy little test because <clears throat> you can take a tool like this and go up to your stage box at the end of your snake on stage and just pop this into each of your connectors and within a you know less than a minute ring out the entire stage box make sure that all of those lines are good. Now of course this is a very simple test it just makes sure that it gets phantom power on both pins two and three and so that's a pretty good indication that all three wires in that cable are good and most of the time when cables fail it's because there's a broken connection somewhere either it's broke from the cable getting twisted or very likely it breaks right up the connector but uh, that's usually what happens there are some failure modes that this would not detect for example if pins two and three were swapped around and the cable was inverted both lights would still light up but it, it wouldn't show that there was an error on the other hand in that situation the microphone would also work just fine it would just have its phase inverted and nobody probably notice anyway in most cases Another case where this would not detect is if there was a short between pins two and three. But that tends to be somewhat unusual. Usually cables don't short, usually they break. So um, for just a couple of dollars, you could make one of these up and have a really quick cable tester for checking out cables at your shows. I find it to be handy. Maybe you do too. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you have any comments, comment below. And if you'd like to subscribe, that would be cool. And next time, we'll talk about something even more interesting. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in.